So you're thinking about moving to Vancouver, BC and curious about living on Vancouver's west side in the Selfins neighborhood? Well, if you love the thought of living in a larger than average single family detached home like these ones with a sizable yard, you're an avid golfer or you love horses or you just love walking and running through chills on the forest and along the river, you're going to absolutely love the Selfins area. In this video, I'm going to dive into everything that you need to know about living in Vancouver and specifically in the Selfins neighborhood on Vancouver's west side. Now, we're going to dive into and look at the homes in the area, what their price points are. We're going to look at the amenities and the recreation options, which are plenty in this area. We're going to look at the shopping and the transportation and, of course, the education and schooling options for your kids. And if you want to know more about the different neighborhoods in Vancouver, then make sure to subscribe right down below this video because over the coming months, I'm going to walk you through each and every single area and neighborhood of the city, what it's like living in Vancouver, BC and the surrounding areas. My name is Jonathan Lerner with the Vancouver Life Real Estate Group and our group here, we get calls, we get texts, we get emails every single day from people just like you that are looking to make a move to Vancouver, Canada, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're moving here in the next 90s or 90 days, just give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or schedule a Zoom call with us at the link right down below in the description, and we'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to Vancouver, BC. All right, let's dive into Vancouver's Selfins neighborhood on the west side. Selfins is a prestigious enclave of estates, large urban farm style homes, and of course, it's distinctive homes along Southwest Marine Drive. Here you're going to find primarily all single family homes, plenty of parkland and community shopping districts, and easy access to down Vancouver and the International Airport, and really an old world elegance that makes Selfins a really highly desirable neighborhood in Vancouver to live in. So where is Selfins? Well, it's bordered for the most part by natural boundaries. The Fraser River right behind me makes a natural southern boundary, while the UBC Endowment Lands anchors the west side of the area. Northern boundary of the area starts on 41st uh, in the north and then just comes west to Blenheim and then follows Southwest Marine Drive all the way down until Granville, which sets the eastern boundary of the neighborhood. And this area really started to develop in the 1920s when greater access through roads and streetcars were created and, and built in the area. And most of the homes here were built prior to 1946, with many of them in the English arts and crafts and Edwardian building styles. And then next in building style, you'll also be able to recognize many of the homes in this area. Some of the early zoning bylaws back in the day required homes to be situated well back onto the lot. And then of course, Many of these homes have been renovated and others have been torn down to build new, but you're absolutely still going to notice a feeling of elegance in the area that has been sprinkled in with luxury stately lots. Despite being a predominantly single family dwelling area, you have a number of school options for your children, whether you want those options within the boundaries of cell phones or within a short drive. For your elementary age uh, school children, you have Southland Elementary, which is right beside the UBC Endowment Lands here, Carisdale Elementary, Carisdale Annex, and McKechnie Elementary. Now for the secondary schools, there are none within the borders of the Southlands neighborhood, but within just a short drive, you have access to Point Grey Secondary as well as McGee Secondary. Now, if you're looking for the private or independent education offerings for your kids, then you also have to jump in the car, but you're not far from any of the options, especially if you happen to work downtown as they'll all be on your way. You'll find a range of institutions, including Vancouver Montessori School, Immaculate Conception, uh, York House, Crofton House, and Little Flower Academy as all girls schools, as well as St. George's and Vancouver College for all boys. And then lastly, of course, you have the world-renowned University of British Columbia, which consistently ranks among the top 50 universities globally. And it's just a short 10 minute drive along Southwest Marine Drive, making this an ideal destination for higher education for you and your family. When it comes to housing in the Southlands neighborhood, homes began to be built here in the 1920s with the majority having been built prior to 1946. Early zoning bylaws dictated a fairly large setback for the homeless. I mean, the houses had to be a larger distance away from the road, which is a very big hallmark of some of the original homes in this area that continue to grace this neighborhood, thankfully. Um, another hallmark of many of these early homes is that they were designed in the English arts and crafts and Edwardian uh, building styles. Now, not all cell phones maintains the same charm and look. And in fact, you'll actually find that there's really three distinct areas in this neighborhood. The northern area of cell phones, you'll find more housing options akin to the Dunbar neighborhood, which is right next door to us here. And in the west cell phones area, you'll find plenty of large lots, including 66 by 100 foot lots. And then really important for you to know, the area of Selfland that sits on Musqueam First Nations land. 
Here you'll find non-native homes, but you lease the land from the First Nations on long-term leases that run with the land and not with the owner of the home. So if you're looking to buy a home and you see that the ownership rights to the property are leasehold as opposed to freehold, and you're unsure what that means, you definitely, definitely need to understand the pros and cons of them and what makes the most sense for you given your current circumstances and your timeline there as well. So if you want a detailed breakdown of what the pros and cons between freehold and leasehold ownership or rights in BC are when it comes to property, then click the link that should be showing up on this screen here somewhere or right down below this video in the description. I click that link there as well that says leasehold versus freehold Vancouver real estate. Now, overall here though, in Selfins, you'll find a semi-rural charm and country lifestyle, and you'll find plenty of horse stables and beautiful homes from your large estates to your smaller quaint homes, and they're all just a 20 minute drive from the downtown core. Now, what's for sale here in the Selfins area and what's the current price point for homes? Well, right now it's the middle of November, 2023, and there are 33 single family detached homes actively listed for sale with a median price of $4.99 million. And there's also two homes with acreage for sale and you'll find those sitting at a median price of $11.5 million. When it comes to recreation in the Southlands neighborhood, this is an outdoor paradise. The area is home to not one, not two, but three 18 hole golf courses. There's the Muscoon Par 60 course, there's the McCleary Par 71 course, and then there's the private Point Grey Golf and Country Club, which is where I am right now, which is a Par 72 course. Now, Scoregarf places this course in the top 100 in Canada and most recently in 2022 hosts the Canadian Amateur Tournament. Last I heard, the initiation fee to join here was $70,000 and annual dues were $8,000. For further inquiries to this club, I've included their URL in the uh, description right below this video. Now, outside of golf, this area is well known for equestrian activities available with over 300 horses in private stables found here. With its scenic rivers, expensive farmlands, and winding trails, Southlands provides the perfect natural haven for the joy of horses and their owners. And also found in this area is the Southlands Riding Club, which is a non-profit society and a really a cherished hub for nearly 400 riders of all ages. This club boasts a range of amenities, including indoor arena, covered area, outdoor rings for various equestrian activities, such as dressage, jumping, cross-country adventures, um, and top-notch stabling facilities overall. It's really not just a riding club, it's really a community where the love for horses and the beauty of nature come together to create an environment that keeps both riders and their companions happy and excited. And also in the area, it's not just the horses that make use of the trails, but you also find many bikers and runners that call the scenic area their stomping grounds as well. And then lastly, in the summer, for those with young kids, you have Maple Grove Park, which has a small outdoor pool, a playground, and a park area that will have your kids exhausted by the end of the day, which as a parent, I'm all for. When it comes to shopping, nestled right in the heart of Southlands, you'll discover one of the city's premier nurseries, the Southlands Nursery, which is a haven for both urban gardeners and botanical enthusiasts of all kinds. So whatever your green thumb desires, this nursery definitely has it for you. Now, also within the Southlands boundaries for all of your equestrian needs, your tack, equipment, clothing, food, grooming supplies, everything, you'll find Green Hawk just off of Southwest Marine Drive. Now, for any other needs that you might have, those are just a short commute away to three different shopping districts in this area. The 41st Avenue corridor to the North Coast neighborhood stores, amenities, offering really a stroll of, of old world delis, trendy clothing shops, coffee shops, eateries, and on either side of Arbutus. And then adjacent to the neighborhood, you'll find that Dunbar unveils really kind of a, a vibrant main street ambiance with an array of restaurants and boutique shops, grocery stores, liquor store, and even a movie theater, which fortunately at the moment is closed, but it has plans to be completely renovated and refurbished in the coming years. And you can actually watch my video on the Dunbar neighborhood by clicking the link down below this video description, where I'm actually gonna uh, share an in-depth look at the movie theater there as well. Now on the eastern side of Southlands uh, lies Granville Street, which is another shopping corridor where you'll find residents uh, utilize the Safeway for all your groceries, a BC liquor store, as well as floors, banks, restaurants, library, coffee shops, everything you need. I cannot talk about this area without mentioning the Milltown Bar and Grill. Opened in 2014 and situated on Richmond Island, it's surrounded by the Milltown Marina and it's the only restaurant in the Lower Mainland that has two unique waterfront patios and they are an absolute hotspot in the summer. Inside, it has a rustic yet cozy dining experience during you featuring your usual pub fare with a few surprises on the menu, including their weekend brunch. And on Sundays after 5 p.m., they have their prime rib night. 
eight ounce prime rib, Yorkshire pudding, mashed potatoes, and veg for under $27. So a definite hotspot and a place you have to come. I'm here at Maple Grove Park, which is where the outdoor pool is and playground that I mentioned earlier. And this park is right beside Southwest Marine Drive, which is important as we're gonna dive into transportation now in the South Ends neighborhood. So being on the southern side of the city of Vancouver, you have a really easy 15 to 20 minute commute to the YVR International Airport. And then going north, you'll have about a 20, 25 minute commute to downtown Vancouver, depending on traffic. Now, this area doesn't have much for transit in the area, except spread out along the stops of Southwest Marine Drive, or unless you get to Granville Street on the eastern border or Dunbar on kind of the northwestern border here. The biggest negative that I'll say about this area is that Southwest Marine Drive gets extremely congested, particularly after work and school hours for rush hour on the way home. It's only single lane traffic both ways. And then when you combine the surge of students leaving UBC after their classes, as well as parents picking up their kids, it gets very slow along that route, especially going east. And if you try and bypass some of that go by going to 41st or 49th, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. The other thing that you're really gonna notice that also sometimes uh, slows traffic as well is that Southwest Marine Drive is a main route for cyclists that are making their way up to UBC, around through Spanish Banks and back. And so you definitely get a lot of cyclists in the good weather times of the year. So that's also something that adds to potentially a little bit more congestion as well. So just something to note when it comes to driving, particularly along Southwest Marine Drive in the Southlands neighborhood. That's your glimpse into the Southlands neighborhood on Vancouver's west side, where really the best of country living meets the comforts of urban life. And if you know the neighborhood and you want to share some valuable information with those who are researching and if this is the right area for them, then please write down below this video in the comment section. Please share your thoughts on what you think other people should know. And if you're currently looking at the different areas to live in Vancouver, then make sure to subscribe down below this video. And then right after you subscribe, you want to click that bell that shows up right afterwards so you're notified as soon as I post another video, as I'm going to be covering every single neighborhood in the entire city of Vancouver, as well as Richmond in the coming months. So that you can make the best informed decision of living in Vancouver, Canada. And if you have questions about the city of Vancouver or any of the surrounding cities, or if you already know that you're gonna be moving here, whether that's in the next nine days or 90 days, give me and my team a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or right down below this video, there's a link to schedule a Zoom call with you. And we love to be able to help you make a smooth move to Vancouver and its surrounding suburbs. It's time to live the Vancouver life.